now that we've actually looked at what wave interference is, you know, we've seen it before in physics one in a wave on a string, we've seen it maybe in sound. Let's look at it uh, in a little more general approach, just kind of do some examples of wave interference. So when we have wave interference, you know, we saw in a pond, we can get uh, wave interference. So if I drop two pieces, two little stones into a pond at the same time, they're going to create this ripple effect. And when they meet, well, the water at one point, this, this ridge right here is going up, this ridge here is going up. So if the two ridges hit each other, because one's going up and the other one's going up, both of them are good. It will make the water go up maybe twice as much at that point. So when the waves interfere, we call it interference, when they interfere and they're doing exactly the same thing, in this case both going up together, then they're going to add what we call constructively. So we get a peak, a high peak here, we get another high peak over there from where the high point of one wave meets a high point of another wave. Well there's also the point where we can get a high point of one from here with the low point of another and we'll get what's called destructive destructive interference. So if this is at the same level, this is at our zero level, this point right here, because one wave is going up and one wave is going down, all the up will cancel with all the down. We call that destructively interfering. So it depends on really what the waves are doing and how they interact. So if the waves are both going up, they both constructively interfere. If they're both going down, they destructively interfere. If they both are going down, actually they don't destructively interfere, they constructively interfere. But if one is up, one is down, then they destructively interfere. And there's all different ranges along it. So let's look at a quick little question on this. Um, so if we were to look at these two waves, I get this slow varying low amplitude wave and a large amplitude fast varying wave. And I ask, at point G, what happens? Well, if we see a G along this line right here, the low wave right here has a positive value. The fast varying wave has a positive value, so they're going to add together. Both of them are not, one of them's at its peak, the other one's not. But they both are going up, so they would both constructively add. Now if we go wait a little bit longer and look at H, we'll see that at H, our fast varying wave is negative, but our slow varying wave is still positive. So when they add together, we get positive from this one, negative from this one, so they're going to uh, subtract from each other. They're going to try to counter what each one's doing, which is what destructive interference is, or they destructively add. Same thing with I. I, the slow varying wave, is negative, the fast varying wave is positive, so again, they're going to add together, they're always going to add together, but this time when they add, the positive from this one will cancel some of the negative from this, so they're going to destructively add. Again, we can look at J, J is a negative value here and a negative value there, so when we add them together, there's two negatives adding together, so the total wave that's created from this uh, the interference between the two is going to be constructive interference. and They're going to add together. Both negatives will make it an even bigger negative value. So look at K, L, M, and O and see if you can figure out what's going to be happening, say, at K. And if we look at these, we can look and take a moment, try to figure out what you think is going to happen. Well, at K, K is a negative for one, a positive for the other, so it destructively adds. L is negative for one, positive for the other. They switched, but they're going to destructively add. M is two positives again. N is, or is constructive, they're two negatives. N is two positives, so they're going to constructively add. And O is a positive and a negative, so they destructively add. So, what can create these things? Well, as we said, you know, if we dropped a rock in uh, the water, or better yet, put our finger in the water and just move it up and down, we're going to create little crests that move out in this pattern. And you can see that they have a wave front. The, this, the wave itself will travel in that direction. It's kind of like surfing on it. 
but the waves are going to come out in a circular manner. So the question is, what happens if I do two of them? Well, if I do two sources, I take two fingers and I poke it in the water, while well, the waves for one are going to travel out, and the waves from the other are going to travel out, and they're going to add constructively and destructively at different points. And you'll see that at this line right along here, that it looks like everything, that the crests are still there, and they keep going out. However, at this point, it doesn't look like there's crests or valleys, and what's happening is they're destructively adding along that line. We do something similar if we put this source near a wall, so the waves will come off the wall and they'll reflect off the wall. So we get, again, constructive interference and destructive interference along that. And we can see that we change the pattern. So if the pattern up here looks like this, and we get this little bit of shadow here, we get these spacings. We can get a different pattern if we move the source uh, at a little bit different way from the back wall. So these are all different types of examples of waves interfering. And we're going to really focus on, in the rest of this learning module, the interference of light and what happens when light interferes.